Navigating Maryland's housing market isn't something you should be doing alone. That's why we're happy to bring you the Real Estate Rundown with the W Home Group of Next Step Realty. In today's Real Estate Rundown, a major development in the controversy over how realtors get paid. W Home Group owners Kelly Schuett and James Weiskerger have been helping us understand the lawsuit, lawsuit that has now reached settlement. Welcome. Thanks for having us. Thanks always for having us. Of we love course. seeing you. I love seeing you too, and a lot has been happening. So let's start by setting the scene of where things stood prior to this point. So prior to the lawsuit, um, if you were going to be selling a property, we would outline a total commission that we charged for our services. And part of that commission was being paid to the buyer's agent. And at times it wasn't exactly transparent for consumers. Got and it. so I think the new law makes it really, really clear of the amount that we're charging, how much is being paid to a buyer's agent. That's what I was gonna ask you, what this new law means. So it yeah. basically clarifies that it's going to two people then? Basically, so it, the law in Maryland, the way it plays out does three things. The first thing is when you're selling a house, you're very clear on what you are paying your listing agent to list your house, what that percentage that you're paying to your listing agent is. You're also deciding proactively how much do you want to give out to a potential uh, buyer's agent that's going to bring a buyer. Mm -hmm. The second thing it does is it really outlines the buyer's responsibility to work with a buyer's broker or agent. So when you're buying a house, you're now signing paperwork up front that says, this is who I want to work with. If they represent me into a sale, I'm going to pay them their commission. Mm -hmm. So they know up front that if they're buying a house that is not offering a co-op, they will be responsible to bring that in addition to their other closing costs. And then the third thing it does is it eliminates the ability for any listing agent or buyer's agent to see what is being offered in terms of a co-op on our Bright MLS. So you physically need to call every other agent before you show a house and say, hey, are you offering a co-op up front? What does that look like? What is the total? So those are the three things that it's really changed in Maryland. It hasn't totally changed the way that business works, but it just outlines the transparency a little differently. So overall, how are things going since it's been enacted? I think it's a little clunky, but I think agents are starting to actually understand the way the new contracts work. And uh, I think it's going as best as expected. I think it actually is making the buying side a lot clearer. So buyers are, I actually like it on the buy side. A buyer is committing to working with you. So they're saying, yes, if you find the house, I'm going to give you a co-op. If somebody else isn't paying it, they know that upfront. Um, where in the past, I don't know if buyers were quite as loyal or quite understood the process. This mm -hmm. is forcing that conversation that should have been had all along a little bit earlier. And in light of these new developments, what advice do you have for home buyers then? Really just identify one agent that you want to work with, sign that paperwork with them, because then they really can represent you versus all of the sellers and the houses that they're showing you. It gives you your own representation and just understand what those costs could be associated with any house you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Make sure your agent is calling and saying, hey, does that house offer a co-op? And if it doesn't, that's going to have to be something you consider what your affordability is. I think it's more important because there's a chance that mm -hmm. you could actually have to come out of pocket and pay your buyer's agent. Yeah. So if you're actually paying the money, you probably really want to care like who your agent is, mm -hmm. and making sure they're professional, making sure they do a good job and actually have your best interests. And advice for sellers then? I am a firm believer that co-oping is good for our industry. And so to me, paying the buyer's agent, a professional to bring a buyer to your house, I think ensures a seamless transaction. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think that that's just in the best interest of all parties. It also gives you a larger pool of buyers, which is, to me, it's a marketing tool. And you guys know me by now, I love marketing and advertising. If you are offering this fee to be paid, you have a bigger pool of buyers. So you're advertising something that reaches more people because if you're coming up with your 20% down payment, you're coming up with your, you know, in some counties, three to 5% closing costs, and then you need another two and a half percent that you cannot roll into your mortgage. This has to be cash up front. That eliminates certain buyers and certain price points. So it's it's almost just saying, hey, we're going to co-op with you so that you can come with the right amount of cash so you can offer a higher price for our house that you can mortgage in. You can mortgage in a higher price for a house. You can't mortgage in any of these other fees. Yeah, so. I, I think by not offering a co-op, you're eliminating the amount of buyers who can buy your house. Yeah. Kelly and James, thank you so much for being with me for today's Real Estate Rundown. For more information, visit thewhomegroup.com. We'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this.